This is the art of solo filmmaking, the process of being able to make something with no one. I wanted to see if I could make a movie like this. Is there a way to make a movie that's actually good with no one? I mean, if Bo Burnham can do it, why can't you? Today's video is sponsored by EpidemicSound.com. Epidemic Sound is one of my go-to websites for music and sound effects. More info about that at the end of the video, but if you're interested in sounds like this, that, and this, <laughs> you can check out EpidemicSound.com. I'm balancing my Rode video mic um, here, so it's basically so it's closer to my face when I'm talking and doing these lines of dialogue. And then I've got my laptop, which is my teleprompter, which is it's on this, and then I'm using this grip bar to balance it. Here goes nothing for one of the weirdest videos I've posted on this YouTube channel. This is a reminder that you must remain in quarantine for a minimum of 14 days from the day you enter Canada. You are also required by law to have taken a day one test upon entry. Having to quarantine here, I've literally been with all of my camera gear, gimbal, tripod, sound equipment, uh, and editing suite. I'm like, why don't I just like make a short film out of my experience here? So here's been the sort of um, process of shooting it. Now with traditional filmmaking, if you have one big bright light, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Mostly you can shape the light and that's what I ended up doing. So this window here, while super big bright and looks really good for like daytime workout stuff, which I did, I really liked to control it. So what I ended up doing, I ended up closing these so that it was just a single sliver of light, which ends up creating something a lot more dramatic. You're getting a lot more shadows. And even when I was filming other things in the room, I would I would narrow down this little sliver so that it was a more controlled lighting. So like this, with this window a lot more narrow, like look how much more dramatic this lighting is. But already we're getting like this nice shadow as opposed to when it's like wide open. Actually, the other cool feature with these blinds is that they have these curtains, which give it a little bit of diffusion and make the light actually a whole lot softer. This is uh, with the diffusion. This is without it. So you can tell there's a, a, like a much harsher light on my face right now. Who's, who's this? I shot most of this on uh, my DJI Ronin on top of this travel tripod that I bought. I couldn't afford the Peak Design one, so I ended up getting just this Manfrotto uh, Elements M3 which is super good. Uh, we used it for our, our entire trip to Idaho and uh, it's lightweight and goes well with this sort of combo. The reason why I put my gimbal on top of the tripod is because here I can actually do a lot of like motor controls. Um, I can also just, I, this head is so amazing. Um, and if these legs are sort of uh, on an angle or whatever, this will balance itself so it's straight. So I don't have to always make sure my tripod is on a perfectly level surface and go through all that stuff, especially with lower land tripods, it's a lot harder to measure. So um, I ended up just putting this on top and then I can have sort of robotic controls. I can do a lot of my own sort of manual controls here. And it gives me a little bit of extra height here so I can get those interesting perspectives uh, while filming. And then this was where most of the magic happened and was in the editing suite, kind of doing back and forth cuts of uh, being in Idaho. As far as what I shot on, I shot on my Sony a7S Mark III and then on a Sigma 24 millimeter and an F1.4, super wide open to get that really like nice shallow depth of field. Again, I just absolutely love that. My sort of cheat code for making stuff look good, which is cinema's cheat code, like a super wide open aperture and then like just shadowy dark uh, lighting. And between those two things, uh, it really just makes uh, an image look really good. And I just throw a color grade on there that I use from Bounce Color and immediately it just, it. I don't know. I'm super jazzed about how all of this turned out. And it's mostly from minimal lighting. I think all of us overcomplicate lighting a whole heck of a lot. But now with cameras like the Sony a7S Mark III, um, you can do really incredible stuff because of how high the ISO, ISO, ISO goes. Um, and you don't need all of the bells and whistles, these big lights and stuff. I actually find as a beginner filmmaker, it's really tough to understand how lighting works. And of course, it's super important to learn all of those nitty gritty things. I highly recommend just shooting YouTube videos to learn how lighting works. 
But when it comes to learning pieces of gear and stuff, sometimes you're like overlining stuff. Sometimes you're not getting the most beautiful image because you've got all of these like mechanical things in the way when really the best way of lighting stuff is to look into a room, look at what's available, and then go, okay, can I just control this? Can I like close a curtain, close a door, put on a light in this room, and then just close the door behind it, uh, and then just get some little fall off. So there's really a lot that you can do with what's around, and sometimes just little lights here and there help amplify what's already there, but not necessarily be the main source. The challenge of making stuff on your own boils down to two things, composition and direction. How does it look and what can you do better? And the answer also boils down to two things. One, check your framing and audio before filming the main shot. And number two, stop giving a f about perfection. Hey Zach, how do you feel about tripods? Now, static tripod shots can be relatively boring if they last too long. But I find that if you do rapid cut sequences like montages, tripods are so valuable. And as an editor, I would actually prioritize a tripod shot for a rapid montage over rapid camera movement. <laughs> I think right now we live in this era of like cameras moving everywhere super fast and same montages, but I really like the simplified auditory edit montages that you can do. The next big thing for doing something like this is details. So I gathered as many details as possible within the scenario so you could really feel the environment, which leads me to uh, one of the major points of doing these types of things which is music and sound effects. I created a, a fine base layer of the video that I pieced together. But if you watch the scenes without music, they feel, even this shot for example, this shot feels okay without music. But when I layered in just this very simple, minimal, and it's kind of this Japanese style music that's playing in the back, which creates a soothing vibe. And I have that at the beginning and the end of the film to sort of bookend the, the story and feeling of the video. And what this ends up doing is it creates a sort of tone for what the room is supposed to feel like. Uh, yeah, I'm just you know, trying to build a routine, but like anything, it just slips through your fingers when you're stuck here, right? My main source of music for this whole video was Epidemic Sound, and what I love about their platform is, unlike most music websites where I'm literally skimming for hours to look for tracks, I know the tune that I'm wanting, and it's as easy as finding a track that sounds somewhat similar and then hand-selecting a stem from that music track and putting it into my video. Far too many videos, I think, have way too many orchestrated elements playing off in the background with way too many layers, so hence why I prioritized Epidemic Sound for this. I also liked it because within the same search browser, I can go in and search for sound effects, which were key, super clutch for this video. There were so many sounds that just didn't work within the video, from hanging up the phone, getting a loud phone call, and sound effects were really the key element to editing this. So these sounds were really able to amplify my scenario, where I was at, and uh, can really take the scene to the next level. I've been using Epidemic Sound since the beginning of my YouTube career, and it has been game-changing for my creativity. If you guys want, you can get a free one-month trial to Epidemic Sound by hitting a link in the description below. Have fun! So if you're filming by yourself and you're wanting the shots to look good and you want to get something you know, that, that's worthwhile filming, try and figure out what your shot is going to be beforehand. If you're shooting by yourself in, let's say, a tripod, get diverse shots that can kind of cut together to put together a story. So rather than doing a shot of you walking that's one big wide shot, one is if you were to cut that into a couple different shots. So one that's a wide, then one that kind of goes to an expression, shot and then a close-up of a hand. Treat how you're filming yourself as if you were treating on how you're filming a regular old sequence. You would get multiple angles. The only difference is you're filming yourself for it. And there's different mechanisms and ways you can do it. Sometimes I'll put my camera on my gimbal and then just shoot selfie type stuff with that, which ends up looking pretty cool. I love filming on my gimbal because A, I can just kind of do selfie type shots. I can pull the legs out on the base part and then just let it set down on the ground. I can even do these cool tracking modes shot. A gimbal 
is a very useful tool for the modern vlogger and film creator. And the great thing about it too is let's say you do have someone to hold the camera, you can give them a quick tutorial on how to gather a shot, being like, hey, keep me very centered, you pop the camera in slow motion, and I've been able to get everyone from my friends, my girlfriend, to my sister to be able to catch shots on my gimbal. That looks super cool. And actually a quick lesson on videography doesn't take too long to give to someone, so long as you're not afraid of them like running away with your camera or dropping it, quick couple of rules of thumb for them is keep a certain framing. So figure out the framing that you want to have. Put the camera on auto focus and auto white balance and then put a nice lens on. So I usually put a 50 millimeter at a 1.4 and then put it in slow motion or figure out my framing and then get them to track me in usually there's, there's really good stuff. And so long as you film enough footage that you can throw it into an edit and sort of tweak and modify, you're usually pretty set. So for this whole short film, while I wasn't the primary operator for some of the shots, I made sure I knew what shots I was looking for. So I asked my buddy Carl, who's on me on the trip with me, luckily he's a shooter, but I told him, here's the kind of shots that I'm looking for. And then outside of that, I, out, I really assembled a lot of my footage from tripod, uh, static tripod shots that just kind of bounced everywhere. So while a lot of us might be afraid of the tripod because it seems like such a boring device, like trust me, I am a primarily gimbal shooter, but there's something really fun about doing assembled montages where the camera's just attached to a tripod. Consider that when it comes to making like cool cinematic movies of yourself, the major players of the game are lighting, lenses, Obviously story, but more importantly than story, it's the motivation. So what is your motive behind this? And uh, that's about it. And, and then the major one for me was sound effects and sound design to really hammer home the essence of what I was creating so the audience felt immersed in it. So that's it, folks. Thank you so much for watching this. If you guys have not taken a look at my sort of one-man band short film that I shot together, you can take a look at it. I had so much fun doing this. Like when I started out making movies, this is how I started doing them. I literally would lock myself in my parents' like spare bedroom at their house and just go, okay, I'm making a movie. I don't know what it is. I would literally go to a garage sale beforehand, buy like an old radio and be like, okay, we're making something out of this. I choose a theme and then just start shooting. And that's what this one sort of assembled to be. I had no concept truly what I was gonna do other than the fact that I'm in this quarantine. I'm gonna make a movie around that. And then the story just sort of started to assemble as I was filming. So while some of us might feel a little intimidated by perhaps writing a story, coming up with a concept, making that video that's gonna become super trendy. Sometimes just starting pressing record on the camera and starting to just gather stuff together becomes the best formula for execution. And I've done this on plenty of projects where just on the whim, you start seeing the stuff start to piece together in a frame. You go, this is what this is the story now because you start to see a character when you're writing it all down it's tough to start to formulate anything when there's no color grade attached to it when there's no footage character nothing and so sometimes just shooting a proof of concept for yourself to work off of can be so inspiring so that's it thanks for for watching and uh yeah i hope you guys gain a little bit out of this i had so much fun piecing together please take a look at the short film i really put a lot of time and effort into it and uh having your support means the whole world to me okay Love you guys. Goodbye.